All right, guys, I don't know why technology hates me so much. This is my second go round with this. Filming with the new iPad because it's easier to maneuver around the table. Here we go. So this is take two. Uh, what we're looking at is a, a view from the table lengthwise. And this is a uh, mid game after two turns of a DIY scenario, nothing historical. Just kind of trying to um, familiarize myself with the rules, that is to say black powder rules a bit more, but also uh, not conform to the hexes and utilize a tape measure for uh, movement distances, ranges, etc. And it's interesting, there is a notable difference. It's a bit cleaner when you conform to the hexes in regard to movement. Uh, it's easier to predict uh, lanes of maneuverability, if you want to call them that. Uh, and using the tape measure, if you don't think ahead uh, and focus on what you're doing, you're going to have bottlenecks and clogged areas, which will prevent uh, things from happening that you want to happen. Which is a, a kind of miniature game within a game. It is interesting. Uh, I hate to sound cliche, but it's a bit chess-like and being able to move maneuver across the battlefield in an efficient and effective way. That said, let's see what we have on the table here. We do have some French cavalry trying to decide what they want to do. Now, another thing that I've come to learn and have noticed in the past is uh, with cavalry, charging just for charging's sake is uh, pretty stupid. You kind of need to be patient and wait for a uh, an opportunity that is uh, perfect for a cavalry charge and then do so. So what we have here is uh, this French cavalry who would ultimately like to tackle one of these bona fide French line battalions. But uh, we have, as you can see, some... King's German Legion 2nd Light Battalion skirmishers more or less in the way and then 95th Rifles over here waiting to shoot people up. You could argue, well, just um, charge them or charge them. Yeah, you know, maybe. But then there's the rule that states uh, skirmishers, which is essentially what these are, can just evade when charged, so that would be a moot point. So there's that to consider. Uh, what else? Uh, these... KGL light were able to uh, knock out a casualty point of this French line unit here as they moved up. Uh, and then the KGL moved back and will, I guarantee you, continue to move back rather than go toe to toe with a full French line. Uh, 95th Rifles, I don't think have done much yet. And uh, with the units wise here, uh, with the British and French line. Battalions, you're looking at 20 man units uh, as opposed to the standard 24. That allows me to field more separate battalions on the battlefield. Then we have this British Red Brigade, which was unable to do much of anything, uh, unable to pass their command successfully on turn one or turn two to uh, do anything. So they're kind of stuck spinning their wheels. French, or I'm sorry, British White Brigade with three battalions set up somewhat nicely. Uh, we've got a line here on the left, taking care of that area, a line here on the right, taking care of that area, and then a line in the center here, which is ready to pivot and head whichever direction is needed as the battle unfolds. So I'm quite satisfied with that. Then we have, uh, let's see here, British artillery who are able to take, uh, at least at this point, take their pick of any number of juicy French targets here. And have, have done so, in fact, I think with this one. And then the bridge, as you can see here, I, you know, o over time I've come to somewhat, I don't want to say completely disregard bridges on a tabletop. It's just a little too easy. To use a word I've already used, uh, maybe a bit cliche. I've allowed myself to use the bridge uh, in this particular instance, but with the caveat that it is not the focal point of battle. That is not the the victory points, as you, as it were, as it were. Do not hinge on uh, control of the bridge. 
But that's not to say it doesn't play a pivotal role because I have deemed this river impassable otherwise. So you do need the bridge to cross over. And as you can see here, a number of uh, English muffins that need to get across that bridge and bottlenecking up. So as soon as these guys can get over, then I have more guys waiting. And uh, that, that proves a bit of a disadvantage for the British as they've got Folks that need to uh, immerse themselves in the battle and can do so, but have to wait for traffic to get across the bridge. Drives me nuts that the Scots Grays just have to sit there and wait. But that's how it goes. And then you have to consider that, uh, depending on who activates next, if it's the French, they're just going to chew up this march column on the bridge. If it's the British, hopefully I'll be able to get them off the bridge and form line, or maybe even attack column. Uh, but, not, but not just be sitting ducks crossing the bridge there. We've got another uh, part of Blue Brigade sitting here, providing uh, some cover from, looks like a French old guard there. Highlanders waiting to cross along there. So that's pretty much the British. Uh, then when we get to the French toast, we've got a Red Brigade here consisting of three battalions. Kind of, uh, at least for now, set themselves up for fire across this, the river, but uh, maybe at some point we'll be maneuvering towards the mouth of that bridge. Uh, but it's getting crowded already, as you can see. Then we have another cavalry brigade that has started out by the windmill, which is somewhat new, I'm a big fan of, and maneuvered their way uh, to to hear but uh, as you can see it's it's like there's no path of egress and what do i charge so there, there's thing to, things to consider uh in that regard white brigade has three battalions set up nicely here and then the blue brigade who missed their first activation in the first turn but then passed with flying colors on turn two and just ran right up almost to the road there uh, and we'll be getting set up for anything that comes across the bridge there but uh, again need to consider a white battalion there which can provide enfilading fire if I'm not careful. Part of the uh, green brigade here which consists of four battalions. I've got two on the left here setting up and then the two uh, on the right, as already noted, dealing with skirmishers and a British line battalion there. So uh, also the French artillery set up horribly, did not maneuver where they need to go. Uh, line of sight is blocked with French all over. I suppose if I uh, delve deeper, I think there's a fire overhead rule, I'm not sure on that. We'll have to look into that and uh, case on some horses just for flavor. So, uh, interesting stuff. It's a little different using tape measure as opposed to hexes. Um, but I like it because it is different. And not sure where I'm going with this. If I'll finish it, if I'll scrap it and start something new, or if I'll grab those... Uh, as you can see in the background, they're lined up. Newly based ACW uh, Epic Scale guys and throw them on the table simply because I haven't messed with them yet on their new bases. And that'll be a good precursor or indicator of what to expect feel-wise when the uh, Epic Waterloo stuff shows up, which should be early January. So we'll see there. Also, one last thing I forgot to mention and didn't even announce. Passed quietly in the night, but about a week and a half, two weeks ago, Hexes and Soldiers of the channel that you're watching turned eight years old. So there's that. Uh, no definite hard written in stone plans to do anything celebratory wise regarding that, but I'll probably do something uh maybe this weekend who knows so stay tuned for that and uh, i think that's about it 
Hope you guys are doing well. Thank you for watching as usual and stay tuned for more.